Pamela Gorman joins me, candidate for CD3. And, and I want to talk about the issues for a moment because I think that um, trying to make yourself different from the other candidates, uh, you know, in a voter sense, how do you do that? I mean, tell us about you. What, why would somebody go into the voting booth and say that you're the one that stands out above the other candidates that are there? Well, I would say that if you're a conservative voter, both fiscally and socially, You want to find somebody who you know is really going to do what they say they're going to do when they go there. And so you look at who's got a proven record. There's only a few of us you can even check. And I like that you can go to these watchdog groups like Americans for Prosperity and the Goldwater Institute, and you can see my record. I'm not just talking the talk. I've been walking the walk. But more importantly, you know me, Mike. I don't just sit on my hands. I work double time to get the job done. And so as a result, I have a reputation as a leader. So I'm out there leading on conservative issues, not just voting right, but leading on them. And I think that's important to voters because they want to know what they're going to get. I think one of the things we've seen in this country is both parties not doing what they say they're going to do. And I think people are really tired of that. And that's why people are registering independent in large numbers. We don't just need to send Republicans. We need to send conservatives that will actually do what they say they're going to do once they get there. And you were in leadership in the legislature, and you actually left a post, and you kind of you went a little sideways with some of the people in your own party. Explain what happened there. Well, uh, our Republican governor suggested a tax increase, the largest in Arizona history, as opposed to doing spending cuts. And I put my foot down. I said, absolutely not. And over time, you know, all of all of the other conservatives got in line and, you know, for whatever reasons they'd have to explain to you, they decide to support the tax increase. It came down to just a couple of us standing, and I was the vote they went after. I mean, they did auto dialers. They did videos. They made all kinds of false claims about me, anything to coerce me into supporting this tax increase. And that's why the voters can trust me. You know that under pressure, I will not bend. I will not fold like a cheap suit. I will stick up for the taxpayers. I will stick up on all of the good social and fiscal issues because that's why I'm there. And I always say, I'm not just trying to be someone. And I think a lot of people in this race are trying to be someone. Right. They need to know something new to put on their resume. I actually am in politics specifically because I see things that need to be fixed and I want to go do something about it. So what? give me a priority. Um, you become the new representative for CD3. You're following a guy I have a lot of respect for in John Shaddock. As Shattuck. do I, yes. What then, what is your priority as going there as a freshman in the House of Representatives? What's the number one priority for CD3 voters? For you? Well, I think the number one priority is has been handed to us by this administration, and that's probably dealing with the border issue. We've got to go in there and fight, because if the voices from the border states won't fight for this, it's never going to be solved. They've also defined our other important issue, which is getting rid of the health care reform bill. Mm -hmm. We've got to address that right away because a lot of it hasn't gone to an effect yet. I don't know if people realize that. So we can still do something to stop it, but it takes immediate action, decisive immediate action. And that's one of the reasons I put out a pledge that I was going to join the Tea Party caucus that Michelle Bachman formed because you can't as a freshman go in. And and, some of these guys think they're going to go in and change the world as a freshman. Newsflash, you're going to have an office in the basement and (laughs) (laughs) like old furniture. Um, your, Your best bet is to join up forces with like-minded people of the same ideology with, that want to do the same things. And the Tea Party Caucus wants to do things. They want to reduce spending, reduce the size of government. I haven't met anybody in my district who doesn't want lower taxes and less government spending and less government intrusion in their lives. So I feel very confident that I can quickly go in, become an active part of that caucus within the caucus, and we get s- some real work done. So it's the health care bill. It's the reform on uh, taking care of closing the border, but also doing something to uh, address the people that are with already within and are breaking our laws absolutely cannot allow amnesty to be part of that discussion. And those are two very big things we have to do. But at the same time, we have to address stop the bleeding with our spending at the federal level. Oh. And that's going to take some grownups, you know. And one of the things that we've always seen is in the Republican Party as well as the Democrat Party, they talk a good game, but they don't want to make anybody upset by saying no to their stuff. Right. And you need somebody that will say no. And you've seen my record. You know what? I'll stand up to everybody, including my closest colleagues, and say, I'm sorry, no, this is wrong. We're not going to do this. What you have you've done a lot with uh, social media and some things in this campaign that uh, I mean a lot more than a lot of people have. If people want to check out, you know, what you stand for and want to see your information, how do they find you on the different media sites? Uh, they want to go directly to my website, Gorman2010.com, G-O-R-M-A-N 2010.com. From there, they can click on following me on Twitter and Facebook. And we really have worked that social media. We have a network across the country. It's funny, you know, I've, I've been written up as being, you know, 
you know, the, the it girl of, of Arizona's congressional yep. race. And it's funny. <laughs> I, I hope the voters in my own district feel that way. I don't know if that's real or if that's implied because of our social media work. Well, it, it's been fun to, to get to know you. I and mean, we work together in district stuff. And I'm, I'm really happy that you're in the race. And uh, I hope that you're – I wish you success. I mean, it's great to talk with you. You seem – you're happy about the campaign. I you're, am. you're not angry. And you're, you're running with people that you respect largely. And you've treated everybody respectfully. So I, I've got to tell you, I, I like that. It's kind of refreshing. Yes. Well, I, I believe that at the end of the day, I want to end this race. I, I'd love to win, and I hope the voters will elect me. But if I if they – if that's not the outcome, at least I'm going to feel really good about the way I ran this race. All right. Gorman2010.com is the website, and you can go from there, follow on the social media places, and find her. Pamela Gorman, candidate in CD3. Uh, this is the candidate. You know, We've interviewed them all. You've gotten to hear from them. But check out the website. I've told you. Be an educated voter. Check into what they stand for, what they've done in the past. We'll tell you a lot about what they're going to do in the future.